time to put something in your mouth. It's Puff's Pantry. Hi and welcome everyone back to episode number two of Puff's Pantry. Last time we did pizza. This time we're doing something a little bit more involved. Some people are actually kind of intimidated about this dish, but it's really easy. I'm talking about risotto. Does it take a little bit of time? Yes. Do you have to kind of monitor what's going on in the kitchen? Yes. Is it a put on the stove and walk away dish? Absolutely not, but it is easier than a lot of people think. If I can do it, I'm telling you, you can do it. Check it out. First off, we are going to start with three tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in our pan. Turn our pan to medium heat. And along with the butter, we're gonna add a couple of teaspoons of olive oil. And while that melts, we're gonna do some chopping. What's really nice about risotto is that there's actually very little prep to it. You just need some butter, some rice. Really the only thing you're gonna cut up if you're doing a base risotto like this is a shallot or a small onion. I'm not a huge onion fan, so we are gonna do a shallot, but you do a shallot uh, basically like you do an onion. You're gonna wanna cut in deep, almost to the root, right? Thin slices. And no, I've not cut my finger yet, but I definitely don't have the best knife skills in the world. Then you're gonna cut through the center a little bit, and then you're just gonna give a nice dice to the shallot. There you go, so you have a nice little dice on the shallot, and that's what we're gonna put into our pan along with our butter and our olive oil. So we're just gonna make sure that our butter's melting, coating the pan. We're gonna add our shallots, let them sweat down. And as the shallots start to get translucent, we're also going to add some minced garlic. Now I did not mince this garlic myself. I bought the minced garlic in a package at the store because I am lazy. You're just gonna to wanna to mix that around. Definitely gotta watch out not to burn the garlic. And right around the time you start to smell the garlic is the time we wanna add our rice. Now we're using Aborio rice, it's a cup and a half. Just pour it in and start to mix it around. You wanna make sure that every single little grain of rice is covered in the oil and the butter. So for those of you who are intimidated by this dish, that was the hardest thing to do in the entire process of making it. Chopping the shallot, making sure you don't burn the garlic and get everything in the pan. That's it. That's the hardest thing to do. Now you just have to pay attention as we start to add the liquid. So as you can see, our rice is starting to shine nicely because it's covered with all the oil and all the butter, along with the shallots and garlic mixed in. So we're gonna add our first bit of liquid. Behind the rice, you can see, is chicken broth simmering. What we're gonna do is throughout the process, we're just gonna add about a ladle full of this hot liquid. And the rice is gonna cook by soaking up the warm chicken broth. So every time you add liquid, you're gonna do this. And if no liquid is coming down this path that you make with your spoon, then it's time to add more liquid. We're gonna add a little bit more here. And that's basically all you do until your risotto is gonna be nice and creamy. 
So for those of you who are actually intimidated by this, you don't have to be. This is really easy stuff. You just want to make sure that through the entire process you're stirring, making sure that no rice burns to the bottom, making sure that everything's kind of in constant motion. It'll help your rice absorb the liquid better, and plus it makes you feel like you're actually doing something. So while we're waiting to add more liquid into our dish, let's talk about seasoning. Now most times you want to season with salt and pepper throughout the cooking process, but this particular dish you want to be careful. We're using a regular uh, everyday chicken stock or chicken broth and that has a decent amount of sodium in it. So just make sure that you're not over salting your dish. Personally, I'd recommend just using some pepper during uh, the cooking process and wait till you're almost done to see if it needs salt because chances are you're gonna be okay on that. So as you can see, our rice is like quadrupling in size and it's starting to get creamy, which is strange, right? Because all we're doing is adding chicken broth. We didn't add any cream, we didn't add any cheese. The only cream we really had was just that little bit of butter. Some people don't use as much chicken stock. Some people get by okay with like a quart, that's four cups. I tend to use two quarts, just I really like the flavor and you know, you can make risotto quicker than this, but this is how I do it. So now we're getting toward the end. We're just gonna add the rest of our chicken stock and stir until we don't see it anymore. <laughs> Come on. One thing I'm gonna add before we add the cheese is just a little can of peas and carrots. Just peas and carrots. Why? Um, it adds a little bit of flavor, but mostly it just kinda adds color to the dish. And again, not chopping anything that I don't have to chop because I'm lazy. So we'll just mix that in the dish as well. And we are just a minute or two away from adding the cheese and being done with the dish. So let's talk about cheese. The standard for risotto, Parmigiano-Reggiano. Uh, you can shave it yourself or grate it yourself. I went and bought pre-made shaved Parmesan cheese because I don't really like to do any work that I don't have to. If someone can do it for me, I definitely will take that. I am a uh, rich man in a poor man's body, pretty much. Uh, from from here, you can go a lot of different ways. You can add squash, you can add pumpkin, you can add mushrooms, you can add a lot of different things to a risotto. We're staying pretty basic with the peas and the carrots and the Parmigiano Reggiano. That's pretty much where we're gonna end it. And I'm telling you, if you learn this base risotto recipe, you'll be able to take it pretty much wherever you wanna go. So you're gonna wanna add the cheese when pretty much all of the liquid has been cooked into the rice. Uh, there's a little bit left, but if you would add another ladle of uh, uh, broth, that's the time to add the cheese. So it's a little wet in there, but it'll also help the cheese melt. So we're gonna add our half cup of Parmigiano Reggiano. Now you can grate it. You can have it shaved like this. I would have bought grated, but I didn't have it uh, at the store because, well, they don't have a lot at the store right now. But just incorporate it good there. Mix it in. And what you're gonna get out is an amazing dish that's gonna impress your friends and family. But as you just learned, it's actually not that hard. So that is what your finished risotto is gonna look like. We're gonna turn the burner down to low and we're gonna fill up a bowl. So now we have our almost finished risotto dish. We're gonna garnish it with a little bit more Parmesan sh sheets, is that what you want to call them? Anyway, yeah, little tiny Parmesan sheets. So that's how you're gonna serve it. Now it's time to taste it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, I do good work, I do good work. So that's it for episode two of Puff's Pantry. You're definitely gonna wanna learn this risotto recipe. It's not that hard. I get why it's intimidating, but it really doesn't have to be. One shallot, that's all I had to chop. That's it. And guys, learn this recipe, and I'm telling you, the girl might wanna do things with you after it.
you know, I mean, it hasn't worked for me, but it's got to work for someone, right?